Now sometimes you need to write the quadratic equation given the roots or the solution to the quadratic equation. So let's say the solutions are 2 and negative 3. What is the quadratic equation in standard form? So first write it in factored form. If x equals 2 then the factor is x minus 2. Change the sign. If x is equal to 3 then the factor is x plus 3. After that you could just FOIL it. x times x is x squared x times 3, that's positive 3x. And then negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And finally, negative 2 times 3, that's going to be uh, negative 6. Now 3x minus 2x is x. So this is the quadratic equation, x squared plus x minus 6. And we should have an equal to 0 somewhere. Try this one. Let's say if x is equal to 3 and 2 over 3. So what you could do is write both equations. For this one, let's subtract both sides by 3. So x minus 3 is equal to 0. That's one of the factors. For the other one, if we subtract both sides by 2 thirds, we'll have x minus 2 over 3 is equal to 0. Now, we want to get rid of the fraction. So let's multiply everything by 3. So 3 times x, that's 3x. And 3 times negative 2 thirds, that's a negative 2. The 3's cancel. 0 times 3 is 0. So here's the other factor. So in factored form, it's x minus 3 times 3x minus 2. So now we can go ahead and FOIL the expression. So x times 3x, that's 3x squared. x times negative 2, that's negative 2x. And then we have negative 9x, and negative 3 times negative 2 is plus 6. Now, negative 2 minus 9 is negative 11. And so this is the solution. Now, what about this one? Let's say if you're given just one of the two solutions. How can you write the quadratic equation? Whenever you're dealing with radicals, they always come in pairs. So if you have positive root 3, then the other solution must be negative root 3. So thus is going to be x minus root 3 times x plus root 3. And then you can FOIL. So x times x is x squared. And then x times root 3, that's going to be positive root 3x, negative root 3 times x, negative root 3x, and negative root 3 times positive root 3 that's just going to be negative 3. And the middle terms will cancel. They add us to 0. So the final answer is x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. Now the same is true for imaginary numbers. Let's say if x is equal to 3i, the other solution must be negative 3i. So in factored form, it's going to be x minus 3i and x plus 3i. So let's FOIL x times x, that's going to be x squared, and then we're going to have 3ix, and then negative 3ix. Negative 3i times positive 3i. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. i times i is i squared. Now keep in mind, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, but i squared is negative 1. Now the two middle terms will cancel, and let's replace i squared with negative 1. So negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. So this is the final answer, x squared plus 9. Now let's try one more example. 2 plus 3i. What's the other solution? The conjugate of 2 plus 3i is 2 minus 3i. So in factored form, it's going to be x. Now notice that the 2 is positive in both cases. So you got to change the sign. It's going to be x minus 2. Here we have plus 3i. So you change the sign to minus 3i. And the other one is going to be x minus 2 plus 3i. Now we're going to do this two ways. Whenever you FOIL a trinomial with three terms with another trinomial, initially you're going to get nine terms. But there is a shortcut method to doing this uh, factoring uh, problem. But I'm going to do it both ways. So first, let's multiply x by x. 
so that's going to be x squared. And then x times negative 2, that's negative 2x. And then x times 3i, so that's 3ix. Now let's take negative 2 and multiply by x, so that's a negative 2x. And then negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 times 3i is negative 6i. Now let's take uh, negative 3i and multiply by x. That's a negative 3ix. And then negative 3i times negative 2. That's positive 6i. And then the last one, negative 3i times negative 3i. That's a negative 9i squared. So notice that initially we have 9 terms. Now let's cancel. 3ix and negative 3ix will cancel. And negative 6i plus 6i will cancel. Now we can combine negative 2x and negative 2x. So it's x squared minus 4x plus 4. And we know that i squared is negative 1. So negative 9i squared is negative 9 times negative 1, which is plus 9. So it's going to be x squared minus 4x, and 4 plus 9 is 13. So that's the answer. x squared minus 4x plus 13 is equal to 0. Now let's get the same answer using another technique, which will save you some time. So in factored form, this is the answer, x minus 2 plus 3i, and x minus 2 minus 3i. It turns out that that expression is equivalent to x minus 2 squared plus 3i times negative 3i. Now, if we FOIL x minus 2 times x minus 2, and 3i times negative 3i, we know it's negative 9i squared. x minus 2 times x minus 2 is x squared minus 4x plus 4. And negative 9i squared is positive 9. And 4 plus 9 is 13. So as you can see, you can get the same answer, but much faster using that technique. Now sometimes you might be given three points. Let's say if you have the point 0, negative 4, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 10. Write a quadratic equation in standard form given these three points. So the standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So we got to find the values of a, b, and c. Actually, rather than equaling 0, this is all equal to uh, y. So let's start with the first point, 0, negative 4. x is 0, y is negative 4. So let's replace y with negative 4 and x with 0. If we do that, we can see that negative 4 is equal to c. So that's the first answer. Now let's find a and b. Now let's use the second point. y is negative 1 when x is 1. So therefore, negative 1 is equal to a plus b, and we know c is negative 4. So if we add 4 to both sides, then we can see that a plus b is equal to negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. So let's save this equation. We're going to use it later. Now let's use the second equation, or rather, I mean, the third point to get another equation in terms of a and b. So x is 2, y is negative 10. So negative 10 is equal to a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. Now 2 squared is 4, and c is negative 4. So let's add 4 to both sides. Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. So negative 6 equals 4a plus 2b. So I'm going to write it here. 4a plus 2b is equal to negative 6. Now that we have two equations and two variables, we can use elimination to solve for a and b. So let's multiply the first equation by negative 2 to cancel b. 
So negative 2a minus 2b is equal to negative 6. And 4a plus 2b is also equal to negative 6. So if we add these two equations, negative 2b and 2b will cancel. Negative 2a plus 4a is 2a. Negative 6 plus 6 is negative 12. Next, let's divide by 2. So a is negative 12 divided by 2, which is negative 6. Now let's find the value of b. And let's use the first equation in its unmodified form. So a plus b is equal to 3. And a is negative 6. So if we add 6 to both sides, we can see that b is 3 plus 6, which is 9. So therefore, the equation is going to be negative 6 x squared plus 9x minus 4. Now what we need to do is make sure the work is correct. So let's check it. So let's start by plugging in the first point, 0, negative 4. Negative 6 times 0 squared plus 9 times 0 minus 4 will be negative 4. So we do indeed get the y value here. Now let's try the point 1, negative 1. When we plug in 1, we should get a y value of negative 1. One squared is one times negative six. That's negative six. Nine times one is nine. Negative six plus nine is three, and three minus four is negative one. So that works. Now let's try the last point. Two negative ten. When x is two, y should be negative ten. So negative six times two squared plus nine times two minus four. Now two squared is four. 9 times 2 is 18. 6 times 4 is negative 24. And 18 minus 4 is 14. Negative 24 plus 14 is negative 10. So this works as well. Which means that this is indeed the quadratic equation in standard form.